What's up everyone, this is Puka back with round 6 of the Kenosha, Wisconsin Battle Road. The final round of this event between Ross Cawthon on the left and Clinton Chan on the right. Now Ross, by this point I'm sure you've heard of him, I'm sure you know who he is, how great of a player he is. But Chan, uh, he's not too well known in the community, but he is a very, very good player from the Chicago area. He spends a lot of his time judging but he is an incredible player. He always comes up with uh, some strange twists on his deck, which you're going to see here. Uh, Ross actually just saw Chan Mulligan, which looked like a fairly normal hand, you know, like Dark Patch, Rare Cane. He looks like a normal Dark Rai High Dragon deck, but in reality, <laughs> this is going to be kind of a strange deck. He doesn't play a very heavy High Dragon line. It's just like two Dino, two High Dragon, two Rare Candy, something like that. And... The real trick to the deck is that, sure, he can get that into play, but he actually runs Energy Switch, too. So he tries to catch his opponent off guard, thinking, alright, if I just take out the High Dragon, there's no way this guy can move Energy anymore. But the reality of the situation is, no, he actually runs, like, three Energy Switches as well. And that allows him to power up attackers out of nowhere, as they bump into the camera, but that's okay. <laughs> um... They keep rolling the die off the table, but eventually we'll figure out who gets to go first. And it looks like it might be Ross. Uh, let's see, yes. Looks like Ross will be going first with his fancy schmancy shiny Rayquaza. Just flips over the $80 card right away. Nothing more intimidating than that. But let's see how good his hand actually is. Uh, looks like he's got an Ultra Ball and a Juniper, so it's going to be a pretty strong start. He should be able to Ultra Ball for a second Tynamo, then probably attach to the active Rayquaza if he draws another Lightning Energy off of his seven cards. Oh, he's got a level ball as well. So a really strong start, honestly. He has the opportunity to get three Tynamos in play turn one, which is exactly what you want when you're playing an Electric deck. You want that triple Tynamo so that you can evolve into Electric as fast as possible. And even if one of them gets knocked out, you should be fine. I can't actually tell. Maybe Ross might have one or two Tynamos prized. That could be a major deal. I'm not too sure. I couldn't see exactly what was in his deck, but he's taken a while to choose. Um, Ross is a player that likes to mull over his options quite a bit. Always wants to make sure he's doing the correct thing. Um, make sure he keeps track of everything that's in his deck. And never makes a mistake. He just takes his time. And he can't fault him for that. Some people might get a little irritated that his turns take a little longer, but he's doing everything within the rules. Everything's fine. And, um, you know, he's just a very methodical player. Some players play quickly, some play slowly. There's no right or wrong way to play the game. It looks like there are two Tynos in his deck. So he probably will grab one with this. I can't imagine him grabbing anything besides a Tynamo with this level ball. I mean, he's got a Juniper in his hand. He's probably going to play that this turn. So it's just going to be a Tynamo no matter what. This is really just him looking through his deck. And looks like someone keeps bumping into our tripod. <laughs> so the video looks to be a little wavy this match. But we will deal with it. Um, eh. I don't know, just kind of imagine that we're playing on a boat, and it's rocking back and forth. There, now you have that visual. Alright, so Ross did grab a Tynamo. He's also got an Ultra Ball, he'll probably play this. We will see, though. He could take a more conservative route, and... Oh, he's got actually random receiver. So he actually is going to just kind of go for a different supporter. He is... Very conservative with this kind of thing, apparently. He does not want to discard even a random receiver. He doesn't want to discard uh, a catcher, apparently. That's the main card he didn't want to get rid of. That, of course, was a risk. If he gets another Juniper off that random receiver, he just kind of loses those cards. And that's no good. And it actually seems like he's going to Ultra Ball. So this is a, a weird decision. He's actually getting rid of a Juniper... And that catcher, so I'm not sure exactly what he was trying to even hold on to with his hand. Um, 
He puts down the sky arrow, and yeah, it's interesting. Maybe he got some sort of a read on Chan and saw, ooh, this guy's hand, he looks pretty happy. Uh, I need to try to end him this turn. Because there's, there's no other reason for him to play the N over the Juniper. I mean, you were drawing seven cards as opposed to six. The only way you would ever want to play the N instead is to disrupt your opponent a little bit. So a little bit of a strange start, to be honest. But, like I said, he probably had some sort of a read on Chan where he's like, alright, my opponent's got something good. I should really go for the N instead of taking the seventh card in the Juniper. And now Ross will get a third Tynamo. He also did Ultra Ball for the Rayquaza EX. So he's favoring, you know, just I need to build up an attacker as quickly as possible and we'll go from there. He will get the turn one Dragon Pulse for 40, which is a pretty big deal. He's going to discard a Fire and a Tool Scrapper. Those are some pretty big cards to be discarding on your first turn. Just because the Fire is going to help you power up your Rayquazas and the Tool Scrapper is going to get rid of Eviolites. And if you don't have those at the right times, you might just end up losing. So right off the bat, Chan is under a lot of pressure, seeing a triple Tynamo start and a Rayquaza hitting him for 40. This is really the perfect start for Ross. You could not ask for anything better here. And I, I don't know what Chan is going to do here to follow up. He attaches a Prism to Teraki and he's like, alright, odds of me getting knocked out, not so high. Maybe Ross could get a really lucky turn where... He gets, um, I don't even know what he would get. <laughs> um, like, two lightning in the discard, and then powers up his Rayquaza EX, gets a knockout. I guess he could power up the, the Rayquaza with Shred as well. So I'm not sure why Chan is just wasting some catchers there. Oh, it's because he has a Juniper. Never mind. Uh, so he's just like, I'll catch you out of Tynamo. Nah, he's like, alright, never mind, I wanted the Rayquaza, so I'll catch you that one out. And we go from there. So he gets a Sableye. He does have a Dark Patch, which he could use this turn to the Sableye. Maybe he can do that, he cannot retreat the Tracking because there's no Dark Rye in play, though. And I don't know, alright, he will Dark Patch, he's just figuring might as well. I'm probably going to have to Junk Hunt no matter what. So let's just do it. Get this out of the way. And Dark Patch to Sableye. He might end me and I might lose it. So, who knows. And actually, he does have the Ultra Ball. So, he, he actually will be able to use Junk Hunt this turn. He'll just grab a Dark Ride with this. So, this is actually a really, really strong start from Chan as well. He started off with the Terrakian, which is not the best starter. But he got the attachment onto the active. It's a Prism, actually. So, that's going to threaten a Retaliate at some point. And now he gets to retreat for free thanks to Dark Rise Dark Cloak ability. Go to the Sableye, which he was able to use Dark Patch on. And he'll be able to use Junk Hunt to recover two of those trainers he had to waste this turn. Um, so he'll probably get back... I mean, he could get back two catchers if he really wants. Uh, either that or like a catcher and a Dark Patch. Those are probably his options here. He really needs to get back one of those catchers. Because you need those to win the game. And yeah, he's going to go for a Dark Patch and a Catcher. A Golden Catcher, mind you. Actually, he might run all Golden Catchers. <laughs> uh, he might run pretty much just all blinged out stuff. You get all full art Pokemon out there. So who knows. Now, Ross, how do you follow this up? Uh, you're probably pretty confused at this point. The Terrakian with the Prism on there. There's no Dino in play. For Chan, even though you were pretty sure this was a Dark Rye High Dragon deck, and um, yeah, I, I mean, where does Ross go from here? He's got three Tynos out there, but there's no Lightning in his discard pile. He wasn't able to discard one with Dragon Pulse. There's none in his hand, and I don't know. He's just not going to be able to accelerate his his Pokemon with Dynamotor unless he gets those Lightning. In the discard pile. So there's no immediate option for him to take a knockout this turn, unfortunately. Which means, you know, Chan is just fine. The The 40 damage on his Terrakian is actually a big deal. Though, so, um, uh, one of the best ways Terrakian takes advantage of the situation is when he just drops down with no damage on him. When you have 130 hit points, that is so tough to deal with. Not many things can take him down in one hit. 
and then you have 40 damage on him. Well, now look at what can knock him out. Pretty much everything. Uh, even that Rayquaza using Shred for 90 can take a knockout on that Terrakian. So that severely weakens his usefulness in this matchup. Anytime you can get an early hit on that, um, that Terrakian, it's going to be a, a big deal. Now it looks like Ross did play an Ultra Ball for Electric. Um, it looks like he had discarded Super Rod originally, and then he decided to go ahead and take that back. Chan let him switch the card he discarded with Ultra Ball. Um, he figures might as well. I can play more cards out. I don't really want to put the, the Raikou EX down on my field, since Terrakian is out there. Retaliate for two prizes is really painful, and it's just not something I want to deal with. And now I get to play more cards out of my hand because I get to attach the fire to the active and Bianca for six. So this turned out to be a pretty good turn for Ross after all. Looks like there's no way for him to get energy in the discard though. Now one of the problems with Electric in this format is no Junk Arm. Now you might be saying, well duh, Junk Arm's pretty good. Obviously, every deck is hurt by that, but actually, Electric is probably the one that's hurt by it the most. With no Junk Arm, your only ways to discard energy are Ultra Ball and Juniper. So, if you aren't able to discard energy in the opening turns, but say you have to use an Ultra Ball and you have to use a Juniper, you run out of ways to actually get these energy in the discard pile, and that's kind of what we're seeing here. Ross has already gone through two Ultra Balls. So the odds of him drawing an Ultra Ball and a Lightning Energy together are not so high anymore. And, you know, he's played a Juniper. He's got another one in hand, so he'll finally be able to get a Lightning in the discard pile. But it's just tough to get Lightning in the discard pile to use Dynamotor. We see he discarded a Fire Energy and I think a Bianca as well with that Dragon Pulse. So things are just not really going well for Ross so far. Uh, he's certainly in a decent position to to still win this game, but I would say that Chan is feeling pretty good about his spot. And uh, we'll see what happens from here. He's got a max potion. Uh, I would actually consider using that before the end to take the 40 off your Sableye. That way, if you draw a Dark Patch, you could actually just play another one and pull off a Night Spear this turn, which would be a huge play. Getting a knockout on this Electric and putting 30 on probably the Rayquaza, to be honest, would be really, really good. It would be very strong. But, you know, he left himself with the option to use Junk Hunt after drawing the cards. He might not draw a Dark Patch, so he takes the more conservative route, which I also like. Um, he would have still been able to retreat thanks to the Sky Arrow. But we'll see if he gets an Energy Switch off of these six cards. I don't think he did. And that is unfortunate. You know, he really was looking for an energy switch, I think, so he can Night Spear this turn. He's going to have to settle for using Junk Hunt once again here. And he's going to Ultra Ball and finally grab that Dino. Now, this actually is not the focus of his deck, as I was saying earlier. He can move energy around just fine without the High Dragon, but it's just another way for him to kind of confuse his opponent, give himself some options. And we'll see if it works. Uh, he's going to Junk Hunt again and grab a Catcher. And let's see. Looks like a Dark Patch probably. So yeah, he's going to go for those two. So a big missed opportunity there for Chan. If he would have been able to draw even a Dark Patch or an Energy Switch off those six cards. Since he did have an Ultra Ball to get a Dark in the discard. He would have been just fine. He would have knocked out that Electric 90 from Night Spear. Put 30 on a bench Pokemon, and we would have seen him take the lead, knock out an Electric, and pretty much just be on top of the world, being the first one to put pressure on his opponent. Now things are probably going to look a little scarier. Ross, he's got, you know, a couple Lightning in his hand. He's got a Switch to get that Electric out of the active spot. He's probably going to be able to attack with... Rayquaza no matter what this turn. Uh, he's actually got two ways to go about it. He's got two switches in hand. He probably doesn't want to Juniper those away. He's going to have to play one. He probably doesn't want to Juniper away the other one. 
So we can just switch and then just shred this turn for a knockout. There's nothing on Chan's field that's actually going to knock that thing out in one hit. Or he could Juniper discarding the switch, getting a lightning in the discard pile, but then he loses a switch for later. So I don't know. It's a tough decision either way. We'll see which one he decides to go for. Uh, looks like he's just going to go for the Juniper, favoring getting more electrics into play, getting, any, uh, getting a lightning energy in the discard pile, and just drawing more cards in general. He's saying, you know what? I can afford to get rid of this switch. I don't think it's going to cost me the game. It's much more important for me to start powering up my Rayquaza EX this turn, and we'll go from there. So this, this shiny Rayquaza that's active is actually really, really tough to deal with. Uh, if, you know, Chan just comes up with Dark Rain hits it for 90, then Ross can just hit you back for 90. The effect of Shred actually goes through Eevee Light as well. So it it's a two-hit knockout on all EXs. It completely ignores all the other effects. Uh, so it, it's really a powerhouse. You know, a lot of people fear it for the turn 140 but overall it's just a very very good card combos very well with electric obviously because you can power it up but yeah it's just something that's really tough to deal with now Chan here he is fortunate enough to draw a juniper off of his top deck he's gonna be able to power up all sorts of stuff this turn uh, he's got the dark patch in hand he's catching out that electric and I think he'll be, he'll be just fine this game he'll have plenty of options to kind of keep Ross at bay. Uh, we will we'll certainly see Night Spear this turn. I can't see any other thing happening here. Um, he actually attaches to his Mewtwo. And he's going to Juniper away. It looks like a Mew EX. Uh, dark. And then playing the Juniper, obviously. So he'll be drawing seven new cards. He's going to be looking for the Rare Candy High Dragon if he can get that. But you can see there's that first energy switch he has in hand. And he's going to attach the Eevee Light to his Darkrai. This is mainly to prevent Ross from exploding with his Rayquaza EX, maybe. And Dragon Bursting for 180. That would be a problem. That would take his Darkrai out of play. Uh, a big thing here is where is Chan going to put this Night Sphere damage? I think he should actually go for the Rayquaza. But he's going to go for the Tynamo. I can't fault that play. But I think you're actually better off going for the Shiny Rayquaza in this situation. Since you don't really have much to deal with it. It's going to come up and hit you for 90 most likely. And then uh, what do you do from there? I don't know. <laughs> I can see going after the Tynamo though. Usually the way you beat Electric decks is you actually will fall behind early on. With the Darkrai deck as they go through their initial burst of just powering up stuff. But eventually you're going to knock out all of their bench Pokemon, or all of their electrics, take away their energy acceleration, and Rayquaza EX, it has to discard all the energy when it attacks. So you're going to take away the Dynamotor, take away the heart and soul of their deck, and then eventually they're, they'll just be left with whatever they have powered up on the field. And that's where you can see Darkrai make these comebacks. This is why Darkrai is very powerful against electric. It's just... So strong to Night Spear one electric, put 30 on another. Uh, you can just soften one up, and eventually that Night Spear damage will add up. This is why we've seen players feature Max Potion in their decks, and, you know, just kind of use it to heal off all sorts of stuff. The, the 30 from Night Spear being the big one. I don't think Ross actually plays Max Potion in his deck, so that's going to be a big deal. But it looks like, uh, as Chan would describe it, Ross has taken the bait on this Hydragon. <laughs> or on this Dino. Uh, Chan, this is actually like the goal of his deck. He puts down the Dino to make you think, alright, this is just a normal Hydragon deck, right? You know, if you don't knock this out, I'm going to Rare Candy, I'm going to Max Potion, and then your damage is going to be pretty much just nullified. But the reality is, he doesn't play a very heavy line. It's just kind of there so that your opponent targets down the dinos instead of going after your actual attackers. So that way you don't have to worry about having to max potion. Uh, now he does still have those options available. He just doesn't play them in high as number as other decks would. So if you think 
about it. Like, Ross could have just used Shred for 90 on that Darkrai. But now, he's focusing down the Dino instead. Meaning Chain has no damage on his Darkrai. Meaning, it's still a two-hit knockout. Uh, unless, of course, Ross is able to power up his Rayquaza EX and Dragon Burst it. So I still do like Ross's play. Even though... We know Chan doesn't have any way to really heal his Darkrai. Doesn't have any way to get Hydreigon into play. Uh, it's still scary for Ross to see that, oh, this guy could get his stage 2 out. And then he can knock out my Rayquaza EX in one hit. He can just move all the energy around. He can take advantage of, advantage of Max Potion. And then I'm going to be in some trouble. So definitely still the right play to go for the Dino from Ross's point of view. And even if he knows Chan's hand, um, it doesn't really matter. It's still the right play. So even though Chan might be thinking, alright, I trapped him again. I tricked him into going after Dino instead of focusing down my attacker. It was still the right play because this was really the, the one thing that Ross was afraid of. If that High Dragon hits the field, his Rayquaza can just give up two prizes out of nowhere. And Chan will... Probably end up on top of that exchange. So it looks like Ross is getting a second electric into play this turn, which means he's going to power up that Rayquaza quite a bit. He'll have two electrics out right now. He can Dynamotor twice to the big guy. I believe he's only used one this turn. I can't remember actually. Uh, maybe he's used two. But he'll have three energy on it. Which means, next turn, he should be able to just power it up for a Dragon Burst. Knocking out that Darkrai in one hit. If you're Chan here, you probably, you know, catch out an Electric. You accept the fact that your Darkrai is going down. And you just Night Spear and target down Electrics. You need to take away Ross's Energy Acceleration in order to have a chance in this game. Now the scary part about this is just the shiny Rayquaza is always going to have energy on it. It's always going to be powered up, ready to do 90. That is really the one thing that's holding Chan back from kind of eliminating everything on Ross's board. And when you're playing an electric deck, this is actually really important. You need to remember that... Alright, even though I can initially Dragon Burst and knock out a bunch of stuff... If I lose my electrics, and then I have no energy in play, well, then I can't really attack anymore. So it's useful to have an attacker that doesn't need to discard energy. You know, like Rayquaza, that one's important. There's Zekrom, that's the other main one we see. Just attackers that can dish out a solid amount of damage while not having to discard the energy, so that once your electrics do go down, you can use your attachments to power up a different attacker. And Ross is playing this correctly. Now Chan, um, he played an end this turn. He attached a Prism to his Mewtwo. It's an interesting play. Um, I guess he just doesn't think Ross plays Mewtwo, which is actually correct, I think. I don't believe Ross plays a Mewtwo at all. He just focuses on Rayquaza instead. Uh, he's probably thinking, alright, I'm going to need to power up Mewtwo to have a shot at this game. And he goes for the electric. Where is he going to put the 30? He's actually going to put it on Rayquaza this time. Which I find interesting. Um, he... I'm not sure how I feel about it. It depends on what happens here. Um, if... If Chan were to power up another Darkrai, he could just Night Spear the electric for 30 and knock that out. And that would be pretty much the beginning of the end for Ross. On the other hand, if Chan can get another Kedra next turn, um, obviously his Darkrai should be going down this turn. If Ross has a fire, that's pretty much going to be it for his Darkrai. Um, and then Chan, if he can get a catcher, he can bring up the Electric and retaliate it with Terrakian, getting a knockout. At this point, he's probably concerned, though. I uh, He's got to be running low on catchers. That's going to be the big thing. Which is why I might favor putting the 30 onto Electric. If you can just power up your Darkrai again. Um, this one's going to go down. But if you can power up the next one. You're going to be able to just Night Spear. Take out that Electric. He might actually have to use a turn 
for Sableye Junk Hunting to get back catchers to even have a shot at this game. And as Ross put down another Tynamo, this is where you gotta think, ah, I probably should have put 30 on the Electric. If I could catch out a Tynamo and then knock out Electric and Tynamo, that's such a big play. I take out all of his energy acceleration and then I might be able to just clean up because Ross doesn't have any real attackers left. Maybe my Mewtwo could come in and clean up from there. So every placement of 30 damage is crucial. If you screw up one of them, you might end up losing. Um, I don't know if he actually screwed that up, but I'm just kind of giving another scenario where the 30, putting it on electric instead, may open up some doors for you. Maybe he's got another plan that I'm not thinking about, or the 30 on Rayquaza is important. Maybe he just thinks he has to attack with Mewtwo at some point, and X-Ball it for 100, or retaliate with Terrakian. So, who knows? Now Ross... He's doing some math here. He played another Ultra Ball for the Tynamo. He's got a Bianca in hand. He's going to save his switch. He's going to draw five. And he draws the fire energy. This is a, a big turn. Uh, his deck has got to be getting thin. So that was really good odds, I think, of him drawing that fire in the first place. Um, he's actually got a nice, I mean, amount of stuff left in his deck. In terms of resources, uh, he has plenty of fire left. He's got at least one switch. And it looks like he's got a catcher. He's got another fire. Uh, so he's got all sorts of stuff. He'll have the juice to finish out this game. We are tied at four prizes right now. But, you know, anything can happen here. I've seen some crazy comebacks with Darkrai. Just knocking out all the electrics. You play an N and it's pretty much over. Uh, it looks like Ross is actually going to play a switch here. So maybe he's just thinning out as many cards as possible before N comes. Uh, he actually gets another switch off of his prize as well. One thing I want to note about Ross and his deck is that it seems like he runs like one of every different kind of energy that he can. I mean, you look, he's got uh, an Expedition one on the active. He's got a uh, Hard Gold Soul Silver one on the bench. The fires, he's got two different styles of hollow lightning energy, it looks like. And, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> now, this is where Ross gets tipped off for the first time, I think, that Chan actually runs Energy Switch. So this might be an alarm for him. He actually... There was no sign that Chan actually ran those until now. Uh, until that random receiver just kind of showed... Everything. <laughs> And now Chan is just saying, you know, I've revealed, like, every card in my deck. Do you mind if I just keep going with a second random receiver? Uh, technically, I don't think you're supposed to do that, but in that situation, I doubt it matters that much. There were, like, two cards left that he hasn't revealed. <laughs> and Ross, just in the interest of time, was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, I don't care that much. So Chan is going to Ultra Ball for a Hydreigon. I don't know what his plan is from this point. He, I mean, he's given up on the Hydreigon route. He never really thought he would go that route to begin with, but he's given up on that completely. You can see by the fact that he discarded that one with the Ultra Ball. So where does he go from here? Um, he does draw a catcher. That is pretty big. Um, he could just catch out that electric and get a retaliate knockout this turn and... Maybe hope that Ross doesn't have another electric and he can't power up his stuff. That might be his way to go about this. Uh, looks like he's not going that route, though. Um, he... I really think it would be a strong play for him to take out that electric. I'm not sure how many are in, are in Ross's discard pile right now. Uh, probably, like, two? One or two? This could be the third electric that goes down. I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah, that would be the third electric that goes down. Um, you think Ross runs 4-4, four, four, but one might be prized. He might not have access to the fourth one. Who knows? Um, but it looks like Chan is actually targeting down the Rayquaza. I'm not too sure I like that play. Sure, he's going to take out the only thing that doesn't require a bunch of energy. But, I mean... You're probably just better off going for the electric. Just 
Retreating to your Terrakian, catching out the electric, getting the knockout. Sure, Ross is going to shred you for the knockout, but then you have your Mewtwo to respond to that. And you might be able to just end him to one, and you've got your Mewtwo there. And you should be able to close the game out from there, unless Ross top decks something great. So, I really would prefer that he goes for electric in that situation, but he's going to target down the only thing that's really powered up. Um, thinking, alright, I don't think Ross can even power anything up this turn. Maybe he can Dragon Burst me for like 120, but that's not even going to be that big of a deal. Since I have Max Potion, I can always heal that piddly damage off. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that can happen here. And there's only two prizes left for Ross, three left for Chan. Pretty much anything can happen just because Chan runs those energy switches. Uh, he's He's got one in hand already. He does have the N as well. So I really think he would have been better off going for the electric. It's hard to tell. But I'm always in favor of cutting off that energy acceleration so that when your opponent just doesn't have any electrics left, which would be the case here. Ross is out. And I think his fourth electric is prized. He would have no more acceleration. Then, if Ross takes a knockout, he goes down to one prize. You can end him to one. Or even an end to two, if he doesn't take a knockout, is just as big. So I... I don't know. Now Ross has energy acceleration. It's going to be tough for Chan to really get a big knockout here at this point. He is actually out of catchers, I believe. That was his fourth one. He might have to use a turn to junk hunt. Uh, looks like Ross is now just... You know, he's going for it. He, he knows, alright, all I have to do is power up Rayquaza one more time. I knock out an EX, and I win. It's pretty simple for him. For Chan, it's still three more prizes. It's three more prizes without catcher, most notably. And it's just not going to be easy. So Ross actually attaches a second fire to his Rayquaza. This is uh, another thing you can do. If your opponent doesn't have Eevee Light, you can attach three fires as well and then just discard those with Dragon Burst. You don't see that very often, but it could happen. And he's just kind of threatening. Alright. I have a catcher in hand. I have two fire. I have an electric in play and a lightning energy on my Rayquaza. If I draw either a fire or a lightning, I can Dragon Burst to you for the knockout. And I'll win this game. So Ross right now is definitely in a strong position. And it's mainly because he still has the electric in play. Who knows what would have happened if Chan went for the electric. But we're past that now. We'll see what happens. Um, he has a blend. He's going to put it on his Sableye this turn. Uh, he's definitely going to have to use N this turn. I can't see him surviving any other way. So he's going to have to use that. And probably Junk Hunt for maybe a Catcher. Something else. I'm not too sure. His only real way of winning is to avoid a knockout, and he needs to take care of that Rayquaza EX sitting on the bench. I don't know if he runs anything that can even do that. Maybe it might be time to just kind of go for a Hail Mary, try to get the Dino out there, and get the Hydreigon, and win that way. That's the only real thing that can knock out that Rayquaza EX in one hit. He's going to Super Rod shuffle in three Dark Energy. So it looks like he is not going the Dino route at all. He's just going with what he's got on board. Which, I don't know if he'll have enough energy to take the win with Mewtwo. Uh, maybe he could get some sort of energy switch shenanigans. Uh, and, I don't know, that would take a lot of energy to knock out a Rayquaza in one hit. But maybe he could do that. That would involve him playing one energy switch this turn and playing the N. And then Junk Hunting, hoping Ross doesn't have a catcher. But really, it's just going to come down to N and praying in general at this point. Uh, he definitely should play the energy switch, move the energy off his Darkrai to his Mewtwo. But it looks like he's going to N. He's not going to play the energy switch at all. I don't know how many supporters he has left. He used a very costly Juniper the previous turn that discarded a bunch of supporters. So he might actually be out of supporters. 
And Ross, like I said earlier, he has a really thin deck. Uh, he Really, he has a lot of cards he can draw. Um, he'll be getting three of those cards, two plus the card for the turn. Two catchers is what he has right now. Um, the, I mean, we've seen... Let's see, I know there's at least like a fire energy left, probably a Bianca or two. And then I know there's a switch as well. Those might be his only cards left, so very good odds that he has something. And so Chan is just going to use Junk Hunt, and I mean, just imagine if he had played the energy switch to his Mewtwo. That would give him an option next turn. If Roth, Ross whiffed, and oh, looks like our camera feed went out. <laughs> so yeah, I do apologize. Apparently the camera ran out of space, so we couldn't actually catch the last few turns of this match. But I was there watching, so I can fill you in on what happened. Uh, time actually got called, I think during Chan's turn. Uh, he junk hunted for the catcher and a dark patch. He was just trying to go for one last big play where he could catch out Ross's Rayquaza and go for the win. Uh, Ross did not get the cards he needed to get the win that turn, so he actually decided to power up a Tynamo instead and Thunder Wave to try to just kind of buy a turn to win the game, uh, but he got Tails, Chan unfortunately couldn't get anything, and then Ross, he powered up his Rayquaza EX and knocked out Chan's Darkrai, and it was game over. Um, it was just an inevitable occurrence. I mean, that Rayquaza just had too many energy on it, and eventually he Dragon Bursted for the game. So Ross did win this game, he ended up 5-1, and one. Chan fell down to 4-2, and two, and we had a great match here. But Ross did come out on top against the wacky Darkrai Hydragon Energy Switch deck of Chan. So thanks for watching, guys. I, I'm sorry that the last few turns weren't recorded, but it happens sometimes. You know, technology. Can't always keep track of this stuff. But it was a great game nonetheless. And I'm glad we got to feature Ross and Chan in such a good match. So thanks for watching, guys. I am Puka from the Top Cut. This is going to wrap up our coverage from the Kenosha, Wisconsin Battle Road. We'll see if we can get more matches from other Battle Roads. And I'll see you guys next time.